In addition to a unlimited number of software breakpoints that can be set by a debugger inserting a hex CC over the top of some assembly instruction, there's also support for what's called hardware breakpoints. These are things that are built into the hardware where when it sees a particular address, it will cause an interrupt. Unfortunately, there's only support for four hardware breakpoints. So the limitation of four comes from some hardware debug registers that exist, where debug registers zero through three have a linear address where some breakpoint is to occur. There is a debug register four and five, but they're reserved and unused for now. So basically debug registers zero through three are the only things we can put addresses for breakpoints. Debug register six is the status register where when a breakpoint happens, a debugger must look at the status to see what kind of breakpoint happened and where. And debug register seven is the control register where debuggers will set things to enable or disable breakpoints. Now, all of the debug register accesses require CPL zero, and it is done through a special form of the move assembly instruction, just like with moving to control registers, we also, or segment registers for that matter, we also have a version to move to debug registers. Here's an overview of what the debug registers look like, except for the fact that there's a bug in the manual, there should be a debug register zero down here as well. So zero through three, just take 64-bit linear addresses, four and five reserved, six for status, so some particular bits are gonna tell us what breakpoints fired, and seven for control. So let's look at the first control bits. L0 through L3 are the local breakpoint enables. These flags are nominally cleared on task switches, but as we said, no one uses tasks and task switches for this purpose anymore. So for all intents and purposes, these can just be used as is. G0 through 3 were the global breakpoints, which were going to survive task switches. But again, because no one does task switches, these are not the differentiation between local and global is meaningless at this point, and people tend to just use the local enable. Now there's also a LE and GE, but we don't care about these on 64-bit processors because they're not supported. Then there is the general detect flag. Now if this is set to one, this is set to one, come on. All right. If this is set to one, then actually using those move assembly instructions to move into the debug registers to change DR0, DR1, etc. If you move to those registers and this is set, it will actually cause a debugging exception in and of itself, a interrupt one. And so this in some sense is used to sort of maintain control over the debug registers. So if the initial debugger gets in there and it wants to set up certain controls, certain hardware breakpoints, then if some other random piece of software that's unexpectedly comes along and tries to scribble all over those, this, um, this flag being set will cause an interrupt which the software could then catch and you know, either deny or allow the particular overwrites to the debug registers. I actually just backed up for a second because I realized I didn't actually say explicitly that the L0 enablement of the local breakpoint is going to enable a breakpoint on whatever linear address is in debug register zero. L1 is debug register one, L2 debug register two, L3 debug register three. So those are each explicitly associated with the particular number that is, and that's gonna be annoying. <laughs> Gotta wait through that again. Go, 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 go. Okay, and so then basically if this read write zero is set to a particular value down here, and if the linear address, is, if the breakpoint on that linear address in debug register zero is enabled, then RW of zero zero would mean debug register zero is treated as a linear address for a break on execute. So zero zero is break on ex instruction execution. Zero one is break on data writes. I'm gonna skip over to one one is break on data reads or writes. So there's a break on write, there's a break on read or write, there's no form of read only. And then if control register four dot DE for debugging extensions, so here we've got control register four making an unexpected appearance here, guest starring. 
if DE is equal to one, then one zero means break on IO or port IO. And that's actually going to be the topic for the next section. If DE is equal to zero, then one zero is undefined and that's not a valid type of breakpoint. So it was kind of you know unexpected to me, CR4.DE just popping up out of the blue saying, you know, I'm relevant. But then I was reading this and I was like, cradle, crade, cradle, cradle to the grave. And then I went searching for cradle to the grave to make sure that wasn't, you know, a reference to anything I shouldn't be referencing. I came up with this awesome picture and I manipulated it using my mad Photoshop skills, which really are just like chopping chunks of, you know, H's and, and copying and pasting them around. And there you go. That is by far the most badass version of control registers you've ever seen or you ever will see. All right, now back to the non-badass looking of particular bits in registers. So if this is the interpretation of how the breakpoint is supposed to occur based on execute, read, read, write, or write, Sorry, based on execute, I'm going to go mentally from top to bottom, based on execute, based on write, based on port IO, or based on read write. Then len is going to specify what size of, a, what size the breakpoint should be interpreted as. Now, sizes mostly matter in the case of breaks on reads and breaks on writes, also matters for port IO, doesn't matter so much for assembly instructions. So the sizes can be interpreted as one byte, two byte, four byte, and eight bytes. And this used to not be valid on non 64 bit systems. So things like break on execute, it really doesn't matter. You can use any of these. It's really just the, the linear address is going to be treated as you know, the first assembly instruction. So the first address, and it doesn't really care what the size is. But the size matters a lot when you start talking about reads on breaks on reads and writes or breaks on writes. So if you set the size to one byte for a break on write, and if an assembly instruction writes two bytes, then the hardware will just not break on that because it assumes you only wanted to know if only one byte was, was written to. All right, so that's the control register. This is the status register. You can see it's a lot simpler. You've got your zero through three, and when the breakpoint actually happens, these will tell you which of the debug registers zero through three actually had a break on it. So technically you could put the same linear address in all four registers. You could enable all four registers. You could set all the same lengths and all the same uh, RW bits. And when that breakpoint happens, you'd see all of these set because they were all technically reasons that the breakpoint occurred. But practically speaking, these will typically your debug registers will be different or you know values that are just straight up not filled in. And so these are just to tell you, okay, it was you know breakpoint zero that fired this time, breakpoint three that fired that time. A little tricky bit to this for you know debugger makers is that these bits will be set even if this the control register says that a particular thing is actually not enabled at the moment. So you know the hardware is just doing something super trivial and it's just saying, oh yeah, you know, this particular linear address. And, you know, they wouldn't actually fire the thing, but if there was like, you know, two things that were at the same address, a assembly execute and a write, and if someone was self-modifying code or something like that, uh, then, you know, you could potentially get two different things, um, but only one of them might have been the actual reason. It might have only been a write to itself, not an execute of itself, and it would be the right breakpoint. So anyways, you're not making debuggers at the moment, but just uh, the kind of things that you end up seeing in the manual for little caveats. There's then also the BD, which is the corresponding status flag for the GD, the general detect. This tells you that, yes, it was actually the general detect uh, breakpoint that just fired. So someone was trying to move to a debug register. So this could be used for, you know, the debuggers fighting amongst themselves to try to see who gets to control the debug registers. Then there's the BS flag, which is set when you're single stepping. Now we're gonna talk about single stepping in the next video. So this is just to say that if you're single stepping, this flag will be set. All right, now you can actually see a very strong correspondence in the wind debug definition of hardware breakpoints, the break on access, and the things that we just saw about how the actual hardware registers work. So the, the formatting for break on access is break on access, 
the access type, the size, and the address. So the access types are R for read write, W for write, E for execute, and I for port IO. The size is those things like the length field, can it be one, two, four, or eight, although Windabug specifically says the size must be one for break on execute. And then the address is the linear address where you're going to, which the debugger is going to fill into the debug register.